Body Fellowship members, and of course, the Exact and Truth landscape of Body Fellowship believers across that fruity plain that fellowship with us, irrespective of where your membership may lie. Welcome to another installment of Exact and Truth Ministries Saturday Sabbath Facebook Live. Will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day that your mighty hand has made. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, shelter, and clothing. We thank you for protection and provisions with regards to our family, our loved ones, children, our neighbors, friends, co-workers, associates, even our enemies this morning. We're asking that you come into this fellowship. We're asking that you lead and guide us, order our steps. We're asking for your direction, Heavenly Father, with regards to the direction that we should go. We live in a tumultuous age. We're living in what we feel is the very end times and latter days. Heavenly Father, we're asking that you allow us the strength and the sagacity to be a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden, the light of the world that you've called us to be in Matthew chapter 5, the salt of the earth. We're asking that you remember the sick and shut in this morning, those who are infirmed. We're asking that you remember every name on our exacting Truth Ministries prayer list, every name, every situation. Heavenly Father, we know that you have power and that you have uh, all power and the wherewithal to be able to answer and to respond to these requests according to your riches and glory and according to your will. Let your will be done. We want to call out a specific name this morning. Our landscape sister from Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, uh, Nadina Brown, her precious husband, uh, Deacon James Brown, we're asking that you cover and sup and dine with him and his family at the loss of his mother. Oh, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And even recently, Deacon Brown lost his sister. So it's a very, very trying time. We're asking that you give them strength. And we're asking that once again, uh, you convene in that situation and have your way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you are. Once again, we're asking that you remember the leaders of the world. We're asking once again that you remember your people, even in war-torn countries and in places where they don't have the liberty and the freedom to be able to worship uh, and uh, to praise your name and exalt you in the open as we still do in much of the Western Hemisphere, particularly in the United States, and help us not to take that for granted. And once again, we're asking that you have your way moved by your power. Remember those that need remembering. We say at Exacting Truth Ministries, those who may be fearful, skeptical, unbelieving because of man's hypocrisy, dogma, and sacrilegion with regards to the orthodoxy of your scripture and your way. Help us not to blame you for what mankind has done, but to look to you and not to our own understanding. And we ask these blessings and many more. Expand your exacting truth across this globe. And we'll be careful to give you the glory and honor. It shall be thine. Ask these blessings and many more. In that name that is above every name, that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, the Christ's name we pray, amen. Shabbat Shalom, beloved, blessed Saturday Sabbath to each and every one of you, Sabbath keepers. Welcome to another installment of Exact and Truth Ministries, Saturday Sabbath Facebook Live. I'm your host this morning, Shepherd Solera, our man Jr. We're shepherd and leading emissary at Exact and Truth Ministries in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We welcome you, irrespective of how many people are joining us this morning live, how large or how small. Uh, we don't take it for granted. We're grateful that you all rose this early Saturday Sabbath morning. Uh, and we're just just uh, reflective with regards to how great the Most High has been to each and every one of us. And we're praying for you. We're praying ministry. We believe that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail of much. So that's why we pray and pray so long. We don't apologize for it because we believe in interceding on the behalf of those that request that request prayer. And so we're asking for the same. We're asking that you remember Shepherd Man, Lady Joy and the family, hold us up in prayer. We'll be much obliged. We want uh, to, a day early, appreciate and salute all of the wonderful mothers out there in the landscape. We celebrate you. We're grateful for you. Mom, Diana, C. Man, in my opinion, the best there is. Uh, we love you. Good morning. I'm grateful for the wonderful wife that my mother, Lady Joy, is. Uh, that uh, my daughter and my daughter-in-law, um, hey, uh, Neek and Natasia, just all of the mothers. I thank God for all of my committee of mothers that pray for me, uh, that watch over me, and that lovingly boss me around from time to time. Mom Nan Dale Smith and Mom Womack and 
just all of the precious mothers, we appreciate you. We're not going to continue to just call names, but I just am appreciative of all of the mothers out there. Uh, tomorrow, Lord will, have a wonderful and awesome day. We're grateful for you all. We also don't want you all to miss this Wednesday. We've got another powerful installment online of Couples Ministry with the Davises. Those precious Davises, Mark and Kim, they're going to be with you on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. And I'm just uh, grateful for the example, the light, and the life that he's placed in those pillars of Exact and Truth Ministry, the Davises. So join them, meet them there. It's always a wonderful time with the Most High, with them. Y'all know on Saturday Sabbath, it is a tradition at Exacting Truth Ministries that we hold up the Holy Writ. Why? Because it contains words of the Most High words that were left on record for our learning. So symbolically, we hold it up because we look up to it and not down to our own understanding. Scriptures teach us that we are to look into the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Most High that have made the heavens and the earth. And so uh, we want to encourage you to hold your head up. There's no power in looking down. We need to look up. We're going to invite you this morning to join us in the reading of the Holy Writ. We're going to be reading out of the Gospel according to John, John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. And we're going to read and reference the New Living Translation of the English translation of the Gospel of John chapter 14. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ. And it reads as thus. If you love me, the Christ is saying, obey my commandments. Well, you know what? We can just close right here and go on about with our Sabbath. But we're going to deposit into you nonetheless and move forward with what the Holy Spirit has given for us to pour into you this morning. Amen. But that's powerful right there. And it really is the key. Uh, and the foundational floor of our text this morning. Just that one singular verse, 15. If you love me, Christ states, obey my commandments. Wow. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. The Greek word for advocate there in the original Greek scriptures is paraclete, which means one that advocates and goes before petitioning for your behalf. Christ says he will give you another advocate who will never leave you, my Lord. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. Well, that makes sense. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, Christ states, but you will see me. Hallelujah. Since I live, you also will live. Verse 20, when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. And finally, verse 21, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful, beloved? May the Most High add a blessing and a riching to the reading of the Holy Writ for the time that is mine. Thank you. Borrowing that phrase from my friend, Dr. Rodney Small. The title of our text this morning is simply titled, What Did He Say to Do? Beloved, this morning is a brief but potent word of truth that will be pouring into your hearing. Some of y'all are saying good because I got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, so do I. We got a lot of things to do. But the work of the Most High must come first and paramount. So we are going to fulfill that. But we won't be before you long. Please don't be surprised. If many, um, possibly and quite possibly, if not most, in the audience today end up feeling as though you're the only ones being spoken to today. Some of y'all are like, uh-oh. No, no. It's an encouraging, 
yet admonishing word. I must admit myself that this word felt more personal to me when the Holy Spirit was ministering it and pouring it into shepherd man as well, more so than even a lot of the messages that we've been speaking of late. So I can concur with anybody that feels like that the air is leaving the room and it's just about you and him and speaking to you because that's how I feel. And we've aforementioned in times past that you need to be careful of ministers that act as if the word doesn't impact, is not speaking to them, is just speaking to you. It's got to minister to us before we can subsequently and thus pour it out into you. But I digress. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, is one of the most commonly known passages out of the Synoptic Gospels, as well as one of the most important scriptures of promise that the Christ conveyed during his walk here on earth. In chapter 14, the Hamashiach promises that the Holy Spirit will be sent as a companion to the followers of the Christ to comfort, to guide, and to advocate on our behalf. Christ makes a promise to his disciples that in their future walk as believers, they would weld the exact same power as he did. Now that's saying something. While he walked here in the flesh, the things that he's done, it also exclaims, Christ exclaims that the things that I have done, ye shall do, and greater things shall you do, because I go into my Father. That they would manifest equal. And even the more so, more powerful, miraculous results as him. That's a mind trip if I ever heard one. And that only to those that believed on his father as well as himself would he reveal the mystery of his glory. I know, that's powerful, right? Now, the funny and quite ironic thing this morning, beloved, is that many, if not most of us, thousands of years later, have experienced the exact same initial reaction in all reality as his original disciples did way back then. Many of you claim to have walked in faith as believers for quite some time now. And if you were to be completely transparent this morning, just cannot claim to have experienced all of the literal promises that the, God, that the Christ made to his disciples moving forward in your own life in this day and time, as was mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter 14. I'm just being honest today. And at this point, it feels to some as if you're actually reaching your very apex of frustration because along with the issue of something possibly not adding up, as it were, regarding your faith walk and life commitment, our adversary, how Satan, meaning the Satan, will never miss an opportunity, never miss an opportunity to whisper negativity to you on any and every occasion possible. So it's not bad enough that you may feel like, Lord, where are you or where are your promises? I'm supposed to have faith and believe in what you said, but it doesn't seem like it's manifesting. And then here come old Slewfoot, old Satan saying, yeah, man, this is a pipe dream. <laughs> Been consistent, if nothing else. You go all the way back to the genesis of mankind, and he's in Eve's ear saying, did he say that you were going to die if you eat this fruit? You ain't going to die. That ain't, it's old Satan. Hasn't changed after all this time. For the purposes of discouraging us from our faith pursuits, Satan is always in that ear speaking negativity in hope that we will ultimately fail to fulfill our destined purpose. It is both common and easy to itemize the Most High's promises, the promises of his son out of the word and be left asking, Lord, where are you at this point in my life? I've been looking for you, but I can't find you. Or in this specific situation that I'm in currently, or this particular instance 
of what I'm experiencing, this particular instance of difficulty or frustration or need for guidance or direction at this point in my life. I've been calling out to you, where are you? I've been there too, beloved. I feel as though I'm calling out to you in many regards, seemingly to no avail. I know we're speaking to somebody this morning. And for many that say that they believe, they neither feel as though they are currently in the number of those that he promised to reveal himself to. And they certainly don't feel as though they have the power and authority to do what he did while he walked this earth as a man. Nonetheless, to manifest greater things than what the Christ had done here on earth. Wow, can take a blow to your very faith. Please do not take me wrong, however. It's not my intention this morning to leave you feeling even more frustrated and or discouraged than you may already feel. Some of y'all are like, well, you're doing a pretty good job thus far. Hang in there, beloved. We're going somewhere with this. I must make one very important inquiry before we moved on, based in the initial statement that the Christ made in the onset of our reading this morning. And then followed by the critical directive and command which followed his initial statement. The Christ stated in verse 15 of the Gospel of John, chapter 14, to his disciples, he said, if you love me, obey my commandments. And beloved, therein lies the rub, as it were. Be honest with me this morning. Can you honestly say that you've kept his commandments and individual instructions, particularly and personally to you in an unwavering fashion regarding your faith walk with him? Honestly, if you're stuttering or backpedaling in your thoughts right now, then you simply need to stop and just be honest with yourself. If the answer is no, then there's your explanation for what feels to be an absentee father in your spiritual life and situation and scenario at this very moment. It's not that your heavenly father is absentee. We've missed the only thing that he asked us to do in this line of the rollout of his wonderful, wonderful promises to us out of John 14. He asked the question, do you love me? <laughs> then he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. As simple as that. Well, I was waiting for him to respond or prove himself to me again in this situation that I'm going through right now. Was it good seven years ago? Yes, but right now I need him before I carry it on with what key. Please stop. Beloved, please. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I've been there as well, but stop. That's not how this thing works. That's not what we just read. And if you're paying attention to what he said in his word, we'd all realize that. That is how you can tell the truly chosen and elected children of the Most High from everybody else. No need to join a fringe denomination that comports themselves to be the only original children of the Most High walking the face of the earth and then spend the entirety of the rest of your life throwing it in your neighbor's face or everybody else that you can run into. Nah, that's not necessary. All you need to do is locate all of us chosen folks that have been given a Nineveh assignment and you'll find an aggregate of chosen people. Maybe not all of y'all, some of y'all say even got 65 Holy Ghosts, but the rest of us with that Nineveh assignment, you'll find us in an aggregate of chosen people called of the Most High, often running from or attempting to dodge what he called us to do or where he told us to go or who he told us to meet or to introduce ourselves to, or who he told us to lead, or in many instances, who he instructed us to follow. 
And once again, therein lies the rub, beloved. Therein lies the crux and the gist of the problem. We can't seem to do what he asked us to do. <laughs> you can often confirm that it is an authentic call of the almighty creator. I am a witness because he commonly calls those of us that he has elected truly to areas and in areas to do things that we simply do not want to do. Beloved, I don't understand these folks running around excited about shepherding his flock. You're not excited about shepherding his flock? Are you serious? I fear the Lord. I receive his call. I feel his spirit on the inside and his unctioning, but excited? I'd rather go look at cars. I'm just being honest. It, does, it don't mean that I don't love the people of the most high, but what is this thing where people are like, hey, I'm going, we're going to have this expansive parking lot and, and, and he's called me to, to, to pastor a mega ministry of thousands. And he's, do you understand the responsibilities in faithfully watching over and protecting and shepherding his chosen people? Do you understand the gravity of that? Ain't no sane individual living in the flesh campaigning for that responsibility. Vote for me to be pastor. Vote for me to be uh, the companion or the wife to the pastor. Vote for me to have the responsibilities out of scripture of a true deacon. Vote for me. Man, give it a break, man. You'll find his chosen people over there in the corner acting like they don't hear him. And we want to put Jonah down. <laughs> Jonah got a whole generation of people that follow in his footsteps. Truly called to go to speak to Nineveh. <laughs> and just like Jonah, would rather do anything but go. Yeah, he don't often call people to gold and riches and popularity and fame. So I'm not saying that that's a justifiable reason to ignore his call. I'm telling you, that's one of the reasons why his commandments ain't being kept. We live through the word. In the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 17. And in this instance, we're going to be referencing the New International Version because we live through the Word and we're not just going to speak dogmatically. We're going to give you examples of what we're talking about because this comes out of Scripture. It states regarding the Christ's instructions to Peter, the very rock that he said he was going to build the foundation of his body ecclesia upon. It states here that he instructs Peter during the Last Supper prior to the Christ's crucifixion and it reads, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of Jonah, Son of John, rather, excuse me. Do you love me? Peter was hurt. <laughs> I want to know, is there any true believers listening this morning? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. He kept asking him. Maybe he didn't believe, but he could see into Peter's heart. Do you love me? Peter replied, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. No, us talking about we love the Lord is not the issue. It's what follows. It's like keep my commandments is what the issue is. Jesus said, feed my sheep. He said it over and over again. He said, feed my lambs, lambs in one of the instances. And Peter, the scripture says he was grieved. He got hurt. Now, let me ask you this. Was Peter more bothered by the Christ questioning his love for him? or by what he was telling Peter to do in order to prove his love to him, <laughs> which was be the first shepherd down here of my flock. And Peter was like, man, come on, bruh. If we were to be honest today, true chosen children of the most high, this ain't all that fun, not to the flesh. Ain't nobody just volunteering to jump into the fiery furnace of affliction down here on earth. Ain't nobody just, yeah, man, uh, you cut in line. I'm first to be thrown into flames. You feel how hot it is? Woo, I can't wait. Come on, somebody today. If we were to be honest, true chosen children of the most high to our flesh, this ain't that fun. What he authentically told you to do ain't guaranteeing instant wealth. That's that dogma that they preaching online and in some avenues of false prophecy and crooked televangelism and the like. But authentically, it's not guaranteeing instant wealth or instant fame or instant notoriety. That's our flesh. That ain't what he calling us to do or instant health and well-being. Well, if, 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 
if it's a different time and he's using us in a different way and it's a different season, we love to talk about seasons in this day and time. Everything is based upon what was left on record for our learning or it, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing this. We didn't make it up. It originated from somewhere. Even our faith is pre-substantiated. So why don't you find examples of this in scripture? Well, he made Solomon rich, not before Solomon proved himself and asked for wisdom first. Next example. Well, you see, Jonah didn't want to go on that horrible assignment to, to the captors of the chosen people of Israel at that period of time. And te why would they believe me? He had to be feeling on the inside. They don't even worship our God. They've got our people captive. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria at that time. Why well, I want to go, I, they, they, it's, surely they're going to behead me or, or skin me alive as soon as I go. Why would I go there and tell them what you tell them to get in sackcloth and, and repent for the people that they have enslaved to their God? Maybe now the story of Jonah make more sense. He don't call us to this stuff that we imagine in our heads. Y'all need to go back to last week and see last week's message. This is almost like, I, I didn't catch it until now. This is like a continuation from last week. If you missed it, it's still online. Go watch it after this. That doesn't mean that our reward is not in heaven, but that's exactly the point. Our reward is in him. To live in Christ, but to die is gain. But all we get locked on in that scripture verse is the word die. I understand, beloved. What he authentically told you to do ain't guaranteeing instant wealth or instant fame or instant notoriety or instant health and well-being in most cases. But it is guaranteeing infinite divine favor. My. Now, don't we want that? He hasn't taken a vow of silence concerning you, beloved. He isn't refusing to answer your prayers this morning, beloved. No, not at all. He just doesn't have anything different to say to us since the last time he instructed and commanded us to do what he commanded us to do. Beloved, in my closing, I implore you to be obedient no matter how difficult that might be. Be obedient. I promise you that it will make a world of difference in your life. And to ask you to be obedient isn't a new rhema concept either. Once again, we live through the word. The judge and priest Samuel, for example, had to rebuke King Saul, the first carnal king chosen by the Most High to be the ruler of the Israelites. In the Hebrew book of 1 Samuel, ascribed to him, chapter 15, verse 22, in that verse it states that Samuel asked Saul, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Come to find out, the Most High instructed King Saul to go and to utterly destroy Amalek and everything in it, and its king and all of its people. And Saul had a different thing in mind. Well, I'm going to preserve the life of the king, and I'm going to preserve his family, and I'm going to preserve the finest lambs and the wealth of the nation of that king, and I'm going to present it in a party to the Most High. Who said that the Most High wanted a party? So the priest Samuel had to rebuke him and then do his job by executing the king and then telling King Saul, which at that period of time, that's when he wrested the power and the authority from King Saul and said, I'm going to give it to another because you're not obedient. He said, the Lord rather you be obedient and takes pleasure in obedience rather than the delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. But we're still trying to learn that lesson ourselves to this day, beloved. Some of y'all feel like that the sacrifice of your tithing should buy you all the favor that you require. That's not where he's at. He wants you to obey what he says. We all ought to be thoroughly worn out from insisting that the Most High accommodate our wishes and desires while ignoring his commands. I'm just being honest. The Most High doesn't sit at the bargaining table with anybody. 
Scriptures state that it pleased the Lord when the Roman centurion bruised his only begotten son. He is not really interested in seeing things our way. I'm sorry, but it was way past time that somebody told us the truth. And I'm speaking the truth this morning. We got this other vision or we've developed this other caricature of how we'd like to see the most high. It doesn't mean that he's not omniscient. It doesn't mean he's not all, all powerful. It doesn't mean that he's not all loving. It doesn't mean that he's not all encompassing. But one of the reasons why that is, is because there's a scripture in the, in, in the Hebrew scriptures that says his name is jealous. He wants things his way. And that shouldn't be a mystery. And some of us are living proof of that because of what we're struggling in. We may not want to admit it to one another or to our neighbor, but we're struggling. And it's not because he's ignoring us. It's because, listen, as soon as you get inside of my will and do as I ask, you're going to see the manifestation of what I had to say. And I'm telling y'all, the things that he's asking us to do in many regards, they are spiritual and soul sacrifices. And that's why they don't seem appealing. And yeah, I know some of us this morning, you should be. We're a little disheveled. We feel a little upset because y'all in the landscape, y'all don't necessarily uh, fall in under the direct flock of exact and true ministry. So other places where you are in other ministry, I'm not trying to put them down. We don't have enough body ecclesias that's telling the truth. So I'm not in competition. We're not trying to put y'all pastors down, but I'm telling you, man, this pipe dream that they're selling y'all, yeah, I would be disgruntled too. But if you look into the word for yourself, we bear responsibility as well. You would see that what's left on record for our learning is not like what a lot of people are preaching and telling us today. Trust me, I've been there and I found a lot of these things out myself the hard way. I'm not afraid to confess. I'll leave you this morning the same way that we started out. I told you we weren't going to be before you long. I'll leave you with the question. <laughs> what did he say do? He said, keep my commandments. That's what we should be focused on. And then finally, I'll actually close with the follow-up question. Have you done all or any of it yet? Food for thought. Amen. Would you bow your heads and pray with me at this time? Heavenly Father, first of all, forgive us. Forgive us because the vast majority of us, if we were to be honest today, it's not about proving something to one another. It's not big eyes or little youth, but if we were to be honest in the spirit of our understanding, we know what we haven't done. And we're known by our fruits. So we have nothing to prove to one another. No, a, a one person can't go to another person and put another person down or unjustifiably raise another person up or put them on a pedestal. Uh, we're known by our fruits. And look at this world today and then look at the progress that people in the body are making. It seems like we're regressing and decompressing rather than moving forward. Not everyone, but in the sense of largesse. And we're asking your forgiveness because the fruit is, is that we know in many regards we have not done what you've commanded us to do individually. It's not even about the collective. We are the body of and the temple of your Holy Spirit. And so we know individually what you've called us to do. And Lord, forgive us. And we believe with all confidence this morning that that forgiveness is nigh us because of that powerful sacrifice of your son that did what you commanded him to do. He died, sacrificed his life for us that we might have grace and salvation. But he didn't stay dead. Hallelujah, he rose again where he has ascended to you, our Heavenly Father, sitting on your right hand, making intercession for each and every one of us, of which this powerful admonition and encouragement this morning is an example of said intercession. We ask that you make us saved today, or make us safe, or in the original Greek example, Romans 10 and 9, that you make us sozos, the word is for saved, which means that you rescue us and that you preserve and protect us until such a time that you return for us, that we might live with you in infinite time. We ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua Hamashiach, the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Beloved, we won't be in person on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, for exact insight into the word Wednesday, Bible study and question and answer. But meet us the following week. This week, join those wonderful and beloved Davises online. 
at 7 p.m. where they'll have another installment, powerful installment of Couples Ministry with the Davises. Then the following Saturday, uh, meet us in person on the 20th, Saturday, May 20th at 1030 at the Swatera Church of God, where we have a shared ministry there with Swatera Church of God and New Beginnings Ministry in the Christian school there, where we'll be in person for our exacting ministries, exacting truth ministries, in person Saturday, Sabbath. Don't miss it. It's going to be powerful praise, worship, prayer, deliverance, word, loving up on one another. You ain't got no excuses. I know that COVID is still out there, but you got to go looking for it now. So join us there. And there's plenty of space. We'll be glad and much obliged and just excited to see you then. Until then, have a blessed Saturday Sabbath. Uh, beloved, Shabbat Shalom. There's nothing that you can do about the love that we have for you. So just, just deal with it. Amen. Blessings to you.